C10 Talk, episode 115. I think SEMA 10, 7, 8, and 9. We got Robbie and Tanner, we got Waylon, and we got Lion. Here we go. And I, I wanted to do something that maybe could have been a factory option back for a 67 C10 if they had something, you know, like an SS C10. I mean, today you can buy a Raptor, you can buy a Lightning, whatever the case may be. Back then there really wasn't a sport truck, but I'd like to think that maybe if they did offer that, it would have this kind of hood on it. Damn, son. Welcome to C10 Talk, your C10 truck podcast. Here's your host, Ronnie Wetch. When you're looking for classic Chevy or GMC truck parts, BrothersTrucks.com is your number one source for 1947 to 87 Chevy and GMC restoration parts. Head over to BrothersTrucks.com and order your free catalog today. Whether you're looking to replace your original steering, update those old brakes, or improve your suspension and handling, Classic Performance Products has got your classic truck covered. You can save 10% by using code C10TALK at checkout. 10%. ClassicPerform.com If you're like me and you want the best possible products for your build, Marque Quality Parts has you covered. From side moldings to bed wood and so much more. Mar-K.com And follow them on Instagram too. When it comes to upgrading your truck's gauges, look no further than Dakota Digital and their wide selection of direct fit instrument systems. Hit up dakotadigital.com for more information. What up, what up? SEMA 10, SEMA 10. Cranking them out, cranking them out. The boys are working hard, uh, wrapping things up, and um, we are uh, we're done. We got all our interviews, so... Uh, we got seven, eight, nine coming at you here, and then uh, number ten, the grand finale is uh, it's on vinyl. So uh, we got it laid down. SBS coming at you for number ten today uh, on this episode. We got Robbie and Tanner with their uh, sixty-four, and uh, then we got Waylon the sixty-seven, and then we got Lion. Lion's got a seventy-eight and a sixty-six suburban. GMC hashtag SEMA 2018, the year of the suburban. Kind of crazy how many uh, SUV suburbans that uh, will be out there this year. But uh, going through it, uh, good times. You know, um, SEMA's coming quick, and uh, hopefully we're ready for it. We'll be out there doing some uh, interviews, some live uh, social media style stuff with Royal Purple. So look for that if you uh, if you don't follow Royal Purple on Instagram, Facebook please do that will be the uh that's the goal that's going to be the uh, agenda and the schedule is to be doing some stuff with world purple and then uh i'll also uh kind of come over to c10 talk probably going to continue with the live interviews via facebook live the thing i'm worried about that i did talk to the royal purple folks is just the bandwidth at uh, the convention center that sometimes has been an issue getting you know the signal and, and getting and, and being able to get out and uh, reach you guys so hopefully we don't have any problems with that what i'm trying to do is set it up so we will also have a backup audio and video so that we can put those together and get those out if we do have any problems doing a video and then not being able to get it out to you guys would be you know frustrating so hopefully uh, we have a backup even if it doesn't work out if you're a geek and you're into all this stuff, I tell you what, I've spent a few days trying to figure some of the stuff out. When you're, uh, you know, in front of the camera, in front of the mic, it's different. So I'm trying to go through and look at how I can adapt from a 3.5 to an LSSR to my Roland to the camera. Do I go hardline? Do I go you know, lapel? Do I go lav mic? And I, I talked to the Acura guys. I talked to some of my podcast buddies and just trying to figure out what's the best way to get the best audio primarily to you guys and then some video as well going with like a lapel or a lav especially if it's a cordless wireless they're saying hey there's going to be a signal breakdown so we're going to go uh some hard line we're going to go with a handheld mic probably and uh and then just try to capture that for you guys so roll purple 
I'll be doing interviews and C10 Talk. We will, uh, Tuesday is going to be crazy. You'll hear at the end of this show, a lion from Finish Line. He's going to do his unveiling. Joe and uh, the boys at Square Body Syndicate are going to be doing the air unveiling. You have River City Rods, uh, the B100, El Chapo. Uh, they got their uh, their unveiling Tuesday. I know uh, Ring Brothers is going to be doing their unveiling on Tuesday. So it's going to be a very busy day on, on Tuesday. So stay tuned to that uh, social media and uh, <clears throat> hopefully we can bring it all to you. If you love the SEMA 10 series, if you love what we're doing, please take the time to rate, review, and share the podcast. Please get on iTunes, get on whatever forum you listen to, and let us know. That uh, That's much appreciated. C10 Vatos, I want to kind of give a shout out to them. They are doing um, a little party on November 1st. So it looks like if you're out there on uh, November 1st, which I think is Thursday, because Halloween I think is Wednesday. Their uh, 9 p.m. start time, Atomic Liquors, 917 Fairmont Street, drink specials, fun times, come party. And uh, you can follow that on uh, C10 Vato's Instagram. So check that out. But uh, we'll be heading over there on Thursday down over to Fremont Street. So check out our website. We got the restock for all our coffee mugs. Our new keychains, those leather keychains. So you have six different styles to choose from. We've uh, restocked on all those. We've got a, two long sleeves, a C10 Nation and a C10 Talk long sleeve. So uh, we've got quite a bit of new stuff and some new killer hats too. So get online, c10nation.com, and uh, and check that out and see if you can't grab something, something you might like on there. That's about it. We're just cranking, getting ready. So hopefully this gets out to you, and, uh, and then we'll have one more on Friday is my goal. So... You know how to get a hold of me, Ronnie at C10 Talk, Ronnie at C10 Talk. If you need anything, if you got questions, comments, concerns, if you got some interviews you just got to have, don't forget we've got uh, the get down right around the corner, November 16th, Friday, and then Good Guys will be the finale for Good Guys Southwest Finals, Southwest Nationals. That's going to be in Scottsdale. That's Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. One thing that I like to mention about the get down, I'm sure you've already made plans if you're already thinking about coming. But it's for everybody, so it doesn't mean, you know, only this or only that. Obviously, everybody that's got a, you know, a Chevy or a Chevy motor. And uh, one thing they say is bring the motor and leave the, you know, the Ford or the Dodge at home. But but you can come out, and if you, if you don't have a vehicle, come out and have fun. And it's at the new location. It's at Big Surf this year in Tempe off of uh, McClintock. So... The get down is right around the corner. Hopefully, uh, Dino and I can get together and do some uh, some social media for you guys and get that out. You know, but uh, we're like you know three weeks away because SEMA's a week away. All right, guys, let me know what you think about the SEMA ten. Give us a rate and review. Let us know what you think about the pod, and uh, that's it. Stay out of trouble. Do what you do. Have fun. Late. All right, all right, SEMA 10, uh, the youth of a nation. I'll tell you what, uh, some young guns on here, and uh, the cool thing about young guns is you get a different perspective. Now, the difference between uh, Robbie and Tanner is not only is the perspective different from 2018, but let's go back to 2017. Now, the cover girl is Robbie's 64 C10, and uh, he's bringing it back. He was there last year. We didn't quite make it uh, on the show for the SEMA 10, which ended up being like the SEMA 25, but uh, we got him this year and uh, definitely made it a point. And, and I'm looking forward to getting a little bit of a perspective from the uh, the young guns. So uh, Robbie's going to be in the forefront. Tanner's going to be in the background. And we're going to talk about the cover girl. Robbie Tanner, thanks for coming on C10 Talk. How's it going, boys? Thank you, man. Happy to be here. Yeah, good Good to hear from you, man. Thanks for inviting us. You got it, man. Uh, so the cover girl, uh, refresh my audience, was uh, Robbie64. And um, I guess kind of take us through. I mean, the cool thing for me when I think about that truck is uh, I remember talking to you about it and then posting the just the change, you know, the chameleon. This thing would change wraps. And I remember, I think... I was thinking it was like nine, but then I think you might have said 11, or maybe I thought it was 11, and they said nine. I'm going with I thought nine, you said 11, but you wrapped it 11 times at SEMA in 2017. Yeah, man, we had 11 times. It was it was about three a day, 
Avery Dennison gave us this freaking crazy opportunity um, to bring it up there. And, and last minute, I know a lot of you guys have seen, but we crunched and crunched and crunched to try to make it, and it just didn't get the color in time. We ended up spraying like a tinted primer on it just before the show, and basically the only thing that we had to do different than, than getting it straight into color would we had to freaking we sanded the primer down to all the way up to like 1500 2000 grit so we we were just grinding away trying to get the primer smooth enough so that it could actually be wrapped but did it and and made it to SEMA crazy wrap I mean if you haven't seen them go check them out because <laughs> they're just wild the capabilities and and those wrap guys that that came out and did it I mean they were wrapping the truck in two three hours full wrap and they were tearing it off in between it was crazy and another thing that's even funnier really is that uh, you guys put it together I mean it was at the last minute you were sanding you were making it happen and I remember you reaching out to me just through DM and we're talking and you're like hey man I need to come up with like a name for this thing and I, I, I almost, I almost feel like it was like beforehand. I was like, well, you're a little pimp, and I'm, I'm like, your truck will be a little pimp, and I'm like, so it's a gigolo, and you're like, dude, that's cool. And then I think after SEMA, I don't know if we had talked before or after, but you're like, I don't know, I'm gonna name it again, and this and that, and I'm like, dude, that thing has to be like the cover girl because you wrapped it and cover, and you're like, that's it. And so I, I think. Yeah, I, when. Uh, I, it was exactly like that. That was exactly how it went. And I, I liked, I liked the gigolo. It was cool. But then I go, you know what? This thing should be a girl and it's super pretty. And that's what I came to you saying. And then you're like, dude, cover girl. Well, there you have it guys. Ronnie, Ronnie named the truck, the man, the man behind the cover girl. Oh, I've actually, I just, well, it's going to drop. I got the night train. I got, I got a few of them behind me. Sometimes I enjoy doing that except for, especially for a marketing guy. I mean, that's your kind of forte, but I enjoy doing that when I have more of the story. Sometimes people literally just text me or DM me and they're like, here's my truck. What should I name it? And I'm like, I have fucking no <laughs> clue what to name it, dude. I can, you know, I mean, you have to tell me some of the story and then I'm like, and the, to go back some of the name of a truck is going to be some of the struggle. It, well, it could be a good, it could be a bad, it could be an ugly, you know, um, it really depends. So you just can't be like, people will buy a truck. Now I've done this. I'll tell you right now, Yellowstone's name, uh, was El Wapo. So the day I picked it up, it was El Wapo and it just didn't, fit and it didn't seem right and so over the course of a year and some struggle and some color and some different things it'll come to you and same thing you know it's like don't fight it okay in the tr unless you're selling it you got to name it tomorrow and you're selling it on tuesday wednesday whatever don't fight it it'll 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 present to you the name uh you know as time kind of evolves so nonetheless the cover girl is making a return and not only is she making a return somehow you guys got her in to be painted with Frank who if anybody's going to paint your truck again you and I talked about this you guys hit a home run by using eye candy yeah man I mean I went to the bank and got a, a small home loan but somehow we made it happen I don't think the bank knows this but Frank got the money yeah exactly you're living in a, <laughs> in a van down by the river uh, with Tanner and uh and uh, the cover girl looks you know pristine she looks on point she looks like she's uh ready for uh, not only you know the cover of vogue but the cover of street trucks so she'll be good to go oh yeah oh yeah so how did the truck how did how did a young man uh at the time you're probably like i don't know 21 you decide you want to buy this truck or how did you get uh, a c10 and become part of the c10 nation take us through that oh man i grew up skateboarding so i've always been into like just rad shit, I guess, and like doing stupid shit. And I don't know, I just had friends that I would hang out with. So old classic trucks and even cars were always like cool to me. Well, like pre-licensed, 14, 15 years old, I like came across, quite frankly, 60 to 66 trucks. At the time, I didn't even know it. But I was like, these are just cool. Like I want an old classic truck to roll around in. Well, unfortunately, I wasn't lucky enough to get one passed down to me and my family, you know, kids with grandparents that get them parents that have them like that's just rad and i wish this was that truck but 
my grandparents didn't have that. They had farm trucks that were beat to shit in a couple of years because they all grew up farming in Coolidge and stuff. I turned, you know, I get older. I went through my car phase and building cars and, um, you know, stupid modifications you do through high school and colored wheels and exhaust and bullshit. Well, I finally get to the age where I'm like, you know, I, 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 I go to school, I come back, I decide that I want this truck and, and that it's time that I can, you know, build it, have some time on the side with work to, to spend some time and put some money into something. Um, well, I always wanted, you know, C10. So I go, I start searching. I, you know, didn't want a long bed. Long beds are, are rad. Step sides are rad. But this 60 to 66, in my opinion, is just best in a short bed. So I'm on the search for one and then, and I finally find it and it's, it's out by you kind of on the east side in primer. And I, I hated the fact that it was in primer gray because I just, I've always wanted something rusty and cool patina and, and now it's becoming more and more popular and, and, you know, the scene or whatever, but I wanted, I wanted that and I got this. Well, I was happy with it. And basically one thing led to another, I, I started reaching out to a couple people, Toyo and, and wheel company, Mob Steel Wheels, uh, Detroit Steel Wheels, AccuWare, a couple other guys requesting or, or asking like, hey, how can we partner and, and, and hook me up and I'll hook you guys up? It kind of comes from a marketing background of mine. Like, I'm not trying to get free shit. I want to help you build your business and I think that I can provide you content to do so. It's like, I mean, you know it, content's valuable these days. So I start digging in and, and every every response I get is, well, are you, you know, taking it to SEMA? Are you, you know, going to any shows? Like, what's your plan with the truck? Like, are you just building a truck for fun? Well, one thing led to the next, and I'm like, man, I need, I need to get this thing to SEMA. So we pick up a C10. Um, after basically after I, I reached out to a few companies, it was pretty much final that like, if I want to work with anybody, like they need to see the truck at SEMA. So at that point I did everything I could to, to get the truck a spot at SEMA, get it locked in and, and basically be able to afford to build the truck. Cause without it, without these guys on board, like, I mean, I'm 22 at the time, 23 now, like I don't got parents money to help. I don't got, you know, trust funds to help. <laughs> I just freaking grind away to try to make it happen. Well, you've got the hustle, right? So that's a um, very respectable thing that uh, for me as an older guy to look and see a younger guy who's got the hustle. And one thing that I look at is the hustle for you at 22 in 2017 it's a different world than it was for me at 22. So that's just the way the, you know, the to me, I, I think of don't hate the player, hate the game. Okay. So you're a marketing guy. Now you sound like you have a little bit of build in there though, too. So you've been wrenching on, uh, I, you know, I can imagine little turbo cars or little rice burners or whatever you were into when you were a young man, you always had the C10 fix because you know, they're rad and it makes sense. And you were a, a rad skater doing rad shit. And you're like, I want a really <laughs> rad truck. And this this little car is not going. So then Radfab came along. And yeah, and then Radfab. And so how did so so were you a builder before? Did you you had uh, you know would you say at a young age you were a novice wrencher from your biking days, your your pedal bike, you know, or your boarding days? I yeah, should say. Yeah, yeah, your typical like dirt bikes and working on your carbs or bogging out. How well, how do you fix it? You fucking pull the carbs apart and rebuild it, like stuff like that. Changing your own tires on fifties, which is if you haven't done it, the hardest thing in the world because it's a little ten inch, <laughs> ten inch back tire. But like shit like that growing up. So I learned from that, and I'm still the novice. You know, like I I. I don't do it all the time. Like I practice what I want to know well, and that's marketing. I get to have fun wrenching and quite frankly, get my mind off shit after work. But Tanner does it all day. Tanner's the master behind it, the artist behind it. So I, I kind of have just been around to like logistically get the truck done, the partnerships, the communication, the emails. I mean, there's a lot of shit that goes on behind it that not a lot of people even realize. They all, all they see is, Oh, he's got a Toyo sticker in his window. He, you know, probably got free tires or discounted tires. Well, there's a lot of stuff that comes from it that 
and, and needs to come from it to make it work for both companies. And like when you're fresh, when you're not a builder that's been doing it for, you know, year after year for SEMA, you know, multiple trucks sometimes every year, like those guys have their relationships established. Like these, these longtime builders send a text off to whoever at whatever company and they get what they need because they know that stuff will come from it. And that's the type of relationships that I want to build. And, and quite frankly, it's like, if I could do marketing in the automotive industry, I'd be a super happy camper. But, well, you're well on your way. And, and you bring up a lot of good points. I don't even think these established builders have to send texts to anybody. I think anybody sends texts to them and says, what are you building? Yeah. What are you bringing? Yeah. How do we get involved? Because like you said, it's, right. a, it's about content and it's about exposure. And then they want to tie or pair their name with really kick-ass builders. So, again, that's what I mean. I mean, there's respect there because... I'm a slap dick fireman, dude. I'm not a marketer and I have to market pretty hard because of C10 talk and the hustle and that's all part of it. So I have admiration for a guy who's going to sit there and that Toyo sticker might look like a discounted deal on toils. It may look like free uh, toils. That's fine. The The deal that I look at that is, is, and you can look it up on your own time and my audience has heard me yap about it for who knows how long. It's all about the man in the arena. And, and if you're the man in the arena that that arena is at the desk and you're sitting there sending out mass emails to people to say, here's what I'm doing. Here's my hustle. It's harder to get that first door opened uh, essentially, or that first, you know, true deal. Maybe that you got to go through three doors to get to whoever the marketing guy is at Toyo or whatever it may be. But once you finally get a little taste of it, you start to get like, okay, I got this. And then I think truly too, once you deliver, so you've delivered with cover girl and now you're going back. So let's, uh, let's, let's pause on that and let's bring Tanner. Tanner, what's your story? And how the hell did a, a rad fab guy, get uh, tied in with a, a crazy marketing guy? Well, just hanging out with Robbie. You know, we were at the lake wakeboarding, um, riding dirt bikes, just, you know, out doing kids stuff, having fun. And he comes to me and says, hey, I want to build this old classic truck. I want it to be on air rod. I want it to have big wheels. And most importantly, I want it to air out on the ground. I want this thing to, you know, just frame out. I said, okay, well, I mean, we can definitely do that. Just let me know. Uh, when you want to get started and what we got to build. So he comes to me with this primer 64 C10, uh, you know, like almost all original stock frame, engine, transmission, all that. He said, Hey, here's the truck. We got to build this. I said, all right, we'll make it happen. So we get a custom frame, uh, LS swap. We do, um, you know, the ground up. I take the 64 apart, set it off to the side, uh, cut out the, cut out the floor, the transmission tunnel, set it on the, the new chassis, just make it as low as possible. Let's shave the pinch welds off the bottom of the rocker panels. At the time, we had some 24s we were mocking up with. And uh, I'm going, you know, hey, we got to do quite a bit of extensive mods to get this thing looking good. I was like, how far do you want to take this? And he's like, um, well, I'm talking to some people right now in the works and just uh, give, me a, give me a few days and we'll see what happens. So I'm just hanging out in my shop one day and he calls me and says, hey, dude, this thing's going to SEMA. I got some people on board. Um, we got to make this thing rad. I said, okay, well, if, if, if we're going to SEMA, I was like, you just, you got to have some faith in me and trust me. Cause I'm going to, I'm going to turn my wrenches loose and grinders and everything I got. I'm going to pour my heart into this truck. And, uh, he said, okay, make it happen. So, I mean, I just, I went through the truck front to back. I touched every single part of it, shaved the firewall, bead rolled panels. I mean, the brakes are underneath the dash, the clutch, the mats are all that's under the dash, you know, custom tubs in the back, uh, raised bedwood, full length door, the custom exhaust shooting out, you know, above the axle. We just, we went completely crazy with this thing to make it just you know, like, like Robbie had mentioned earlier, just a, a timeless looking truck. He, he wanted something that was just badass, old school, looks like it just rolled off of a 1964, you know, factory and I, I wanted something that showcased um, this metal fabrication and completely custom, something you walk up to the truck, it grabs your attention, and all of a sudden you walked around it 15 times, you've been staring at it for 30 minutes because there's something you that yeah, it. something catches your eye, you know, between stainless bolts, a polished radiator, uh, you know, polished coolant lines, 
I just the the AccuAir endo tanks hanging in the back of the truck. You know, they're floating. They got hard lines on them. Uh, you know, chrome polished um, bedwood strips. Just I, I wanted to go through the truck and just just completely custom, just touch every single part of this thing and make it something you can't just go buy parts. It's, yeah, it's a completely I'll, custom truck. I'll add to that. Like Tanner's spent a lot of time where I mean I I question it to this day. But, I mean, with the finished product, I can't say shit because, like, he spent a lot of time making mounts, making, for example, like, the rear bumper mount. A lot of people, like, you go and buy a rear bumper mount, and, like, if you got to modify it to fit the chassis a little bit. But, like, this dude ends up basically building his own bumper mounts in brackets just to mount the rear bumper. 16 hours later, we have a bumper mounted. Maybe not 16 hours, <laughs> but, like, no joke. Like, a lot of this shit that, that you can just go buy – you can buy, you know, filler firewall panels and door panels and, and a high hump for the transmission tunnel, shit like that. Like, it's all custom made. Like, and Tanner just went all out with it. Did so you it, have any idea that you hit the gold mine that you hit, Robbie? I mean, did you know that at that initial, you know, few times you guys were riding and waking and chilling and, you know, having a good time. He's like, yeah, I mean, I mean, even since the, the whole five minutes I've known him, he doesn't say that much. So I can't imagine he's just like, you know, here's my here's my pamphlet of all the rad shit I can do over at RadFab. <laughs> Did you have any idea to the level of his capabilities? Dude, when he came out here, his portfolio looked like mine probably with like fucking Hondas and I didn't ever like, I was all into the German cars, but like his, I mean, his, his Instagram was full of Hondas and fucking semi trucks. And I was like in powder coating. And I was like, this dude can build a truck from scratch. Uh. <laughs> but like one thing led to the next, like he talks about tearing the cab off the chassis and just getting to work. Like, I think I dropped it off. And by the end of the day, he had the full truck stripped down, which isn't a shit. I mean, to me at the time was insanely shocking. And then, like, the next day I come back, the transmission tunnel's completely cut out. There's holes in the firewall. And, like, half the cab was gone. And I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? It was it was quite the experience. But he's like, like he said, dude, trust me. And I, I, I put full faith in the dude. And, um, I mean, literally down to the big back window conversion. Like, this truck, like, it, it's rad. And Tanner's had hands in every freaking nook and cranny of it. It's rad. So what's – uh? <laughs> Tanner, what's your background? How did you, at a young, such a young age, how are you uh, so talented? I mean, my dad started his own semi trucking company back in Wisconsin, and I've just always been raised up around that. Um, you know, sparks flying, wrenches turning, diesel engines. I mean, we did custom semi truck builds. You know, stretch them, slam them to the ground, big bumpers. Just everything cool. He went around showing trucks, um, you know, bringing home trophies and just always told me, you know, if you want nice stuff, you got to go out and get it yourself and, and take care of it. You know, you got to have pride in what you're doing. And I just uh, just grew up in the shop. I, I grabbed a welder as soon as I figured out what a welder was. I was, you know, swapping engines on lawnmowers. I was making, you know, drag snowmobiles, just Anything that could go fast or get me hurt or get my adrenaline going, I was hands all over it. And uh, I just I figured out I liked cars and doing that kind of stuff. Back in Wisconsin, I was, you know, into the tuner thing, doing drift cars, Hondas, turbos. And uh, I just got sick of all the rust and, and the cold weather, so I moved out west about three years ago. And I wanted to expand in the hot rods and classics and, you know, this uh, American steel. So I just... Uh, started to chase that dream and that that's where I'm pushing myself. I want to be known in the classic car world as a, a very well-known fabricator, you know? Are you self-taught? Did you come out here? Did you take some classes or are you just like, dude, I'm just self-taught and uh, I just grind like a, like a mofo. I just grind like a mofo. I mean, I, I try to pick up as, as much as I can. Like you mentioned earlier, I, I don't say much. I, I sit back and I listen. I'm an observer. Um, the, the biggest thing that has taught me to this day is screwing up. I mean, if I'll grab something not knowing where to take it or how to get it to this point. But if it's not working, I know that that's not the right way to do it. So I got to try a different way. And it's just that um, understanding, you know, of how things work. Like, you know, you hit it, you hit the metal on this side, it gets smaller. You, you know, you bend the tube this way. It's just that kind of thing is just understanding um yeah trial and error process you know does this work no 
well, maybe this will work. Yeah, this works a little bit better. And just adding the, the artistic features, you know, like bead rolling designs and stuff like that. It's just all grabbing metal from off the shelf and running it through the bead roller, um, welding it hot, welding it cold, seeing what kind of shapes you can make with stuff, just, just figuring out what the possibilities are and, and how things operate and work. I mean, that that's, I'd like to just lock myself in my shop and use new tools, try different techniques, figure out how things work. And that's just kind of how I've always been since I was a young kid, just figuring out how things work. Well, it's cool. It's kind of a match made in heaven and, uh, pardon the reference, but I tell you what, man, people talk a lot of shit about Richard Rawlings and, uh, and I'm a big fan of Aaron Coffin. And you know what, when I've met Richard, he was nothing but nice to me. So I see how he is portrayed on the show and I am by no means comparing you to Richard Rawlings, Robbie, but it takes two to tango. And I think uh, to listen to you guys talk, um, you got a marketer, you got somebody who understands one side of the coin, and then you got a guy who's going to build some rad shit on the other side of the, of the coin. And when you put two guys like that together, it really does create cool shit. Because I've seen some builders who are a lot like you, Tanner, and they think that they have a business sense, and they don't. And unfortunately for them, they'll they'll leave wherever they're employed and think that they're going to do it. You know, and, and kudos to them for trying at least once or twice. That's what life's all about. But like you said, you learn from your mistakes. And I think that uh, the bottom line is, is you guys are, uh, sounds like an amazing team. We saw what you were able to do for 2017. Now, why, how the hell does it make a comeback? Why, why 2.0? Why, why, uh, I mean, I love it because you guys have youth and energy and, uh, you know, maybe some of the time constraints that maybe some older people have or whatever it is, you guys are back and you didn't even take a year off. Yeah. I mean, 2018 was a hell of a lot easier. All the hard work is done. Um, why 2.0? Man, these, I feel that, that, you know, wraps aside all the hard work that was put into it, especially a lot of the stuff that Tanner did wasn't ever properly showcased. Like the, the, the truck last year was like, I mean, it was great. And Avery Dennison and, and Detroit steel wheels and all these guys were happy. Like they're, I mean, it just did well because nobody's really ever seen it before. The, the, the design, the wrapping of a classic truck. And that's why Avery wanted it so bad. 2.0 this year at SEMA is really going to showcase everything that the truck, you know, did, that everyone didn't see last year. You know, it's, it's everything that Tanner's mildly described on the truck that, that this truly is a frame off full custom chassis that, that from the frame up has literally everything that you could want. You know, it's not, it's not a, uh, and I'll be the first to say it is, it's not a no budget build. It's, there's not a fucking twin turbo LS three under the hood. Cause I don't, you know, as, as much as I grind away, it's like performance is money in my opinion, but we've spent the money where it matters most. And that's with, with, you know, the right time and energy and fabrication with Tanner, the, the effort that's needed to, to put the right parts, um, to make the truck fully functional and, and beyond that, at that. And, and, putting it all together and cleaning up at, at you know, I, AZ wire pro just had it. Frank painted it. Um, it goes to elevated design tomorrow for interior. So it, it, the way that that truck is buttoned down, it is it, painted like no other, or, or, you know, on that level of Frank, um, it's wired like no other. And, and the interior is going to be just fully, I mean, nothing crazy, but factory restored. So how did you decide? So, um, take us through, I would think, what would, was probably one of the hardest decisions. You have a truck that you've seen in 11 different styles. So you had a taste. Your rendering um, was tasteful, I mean, very tasteful, rendered rides. How did you decide on the final color with Frank, with with your rendering, with your exposure to, you know, Avery doing so many different wraps last year? How did you guys, or how did you, Robbie, come up with the color? I wanted something super classic. I wanted to not, I wanted something correct. That's the right answer. I wanted something correct to GM. And I didn't want to stray away from, you know, what, I didn't want to get too hot rod. I didn't want to get too, uh, 
crazy with it, which, you know, people that do that by all means, but I wanted something that was tasteful, that was timeless, that in 64 could have looked good and in, in 40 years is going to look good. Um, and I think that this color is that, and I've had similar feedback from everybody else that's seen it. So I think we kind of hit the, hit the nail on the head with this, this colorway. It's, a, it's as near factory, correct. Uh, ivory with, with a very close fawn color exterior and a fawn metallic. And, and for the audience, a fawn is going to be your stock color for this truck on the interior. It's absolutely, it's one of those things where GM, if GM meant to or not, they killed it because it's a neutral color. We live in Arizona, the 50 shades of beige. Um, I mean, the, the, the way that a fawn looks, uh, we just had Travis from uh, pro performance on, he did his uh, 64 suburban complete fawn on the interior, which is factory color. Now the thing about it, the, the paint you chose, I agree with you. I think it's a timeless paint. I think it's a less is more. I, I feel like from the perspective, kind of a weird, uh, trying to, in my mind, as I'm, I'm babbling to say it the right way, this is complimentary Tanner you're going to get people who are going to go flying by this at SEMA, okay? You're going to get people at a show local. And the point being, because of the way less is more with the whole build, and this, again, this is a compliment, there's going to be a lot of little things that that the the lay person might not see, complimentary to right. you and your skill set, to and a little bit of the time, because a raised bed floor or a, a rear fender well, inner fender well, something like that, that they've they've come accustomed to over, let's say, the last five, if not 10 years. So there's going to be a lot of little things that not only with the color, but with Tanner's skill set that people will never even realize, except for, again, that high-end builder that, Tanner, you are going to be and are in process of becoming. And so that will be one of those things where hopefully somebody that you look up to sees it and you're like, right on, dude, that is exactly what I did because the lay person won't probably won't see it. Yeah, I agree with you. I don't, I, I agree likewise. And, and that's where like, even, I mean, down to the color choice, but like I wanted the truck to look correct all around. And when somebody that, that doesn't know and doesn't understand, like they can appreciate it and say, oh, that looks good. For example, all my friends, they're all 23, 24, younger, some older, my family. They're like, oh, that's a cool looking truck without truly understanding 1% of what actually goes into it. It's a cool truck, you know, and that's all that they can say. But then, like you said, you go into it and, and when you, when you know and know what to look for, like that's where this truck becomes like truly badass. So one of the questions I, I want to ask both of you, I don't know if it'll be the same. I don't know if it'll be different. Um, what was your favorite wrap? Um, because to go back and say, well, I had to pick a color. I got it made. I got to pick all these cool wraps. What was your favorite wrap um, individually that, you know, from last year? Um, it's a hard decision, really. I mean, those guys really knocked it out of the park. I was just completely astounded by it the the professionalism that these guys would use during wrapping the truck and just all the different designs i mean I, it's hard to pick just a, a favorite one but there was a time where they did uh they put red down and then they put wood grain over it and with the black roof i think i think the just the the blank red with the black roof really killed it for me i i really like that just the simple clean you know yeah, just, yeah just, it, it looked it looked good it was just it popped just black and red it looked great what a lot of people don't know is they actually sent me all the designs prior to SEMA, told me to pick which one I wanted to keep, which if you don't know also, I took it to good guys and a couple other shows. We were at the get down last year uh, on a trailer way, way far back because I worked that day and couldn't make it before freaking six o'clock. But um, we, uh, we brought I, it around I, all wrapped in that final hot rod wrap. Yeah, that's probably my favorite. So, yeah, I remember seeing it and it's it. I love that. So that's the one I chose. Was it my favorite? I don't know, man. There was a cool little like matte black one with some like chameleon under it. It was kind of it like the painted painted dead guys came on that day and did that one. Uh, that was maybe my favorite. It was pretty. It was out of this world. The way that they're layering vinyl to give it the look that it did. Well, it's cool too because even to hear you say you picked one. You picked what you thought would be your final, but then looking back, 
as life would have it, you might have liked a different one even more, but nonetheless, you changed it anyways. But I think, I think the one you, uh, you picked the, the, the more to me, it's kind of that hot roddy style. You yeah. had the, the O one one on there. Um, that okay. one, you know, I, I think from, from my perspective, some of the crazy Jimmy Buffett, you know, whatever the hell whatever. they were, there was some crazy, <laughs> crazy, uh, what the hell is that freaking fruit of the fruit loops, freaking bird that, you know, I don't remember. I can't think of his name, but toucan, toucan Sam looking freaking stuff. <laughs> um, God, yeah, <laughs> I mean that, that stuff's all cool, but, uh, the bottom line is you guys are going back. So you're going to be back. Where are you going to be? And, and then what have you changed besides, primarily the color you, you get a second chance at the same go around kind of deal a lot's changed just because of how much time we've had to perfect so like stuff that we just we had to throw together uh for last year we we've now had time to polish and and you know exceed expectations on like just little buttoning up and polishing things um we are gonna be this year with dakota digital We've yet to find out where we're a featured vehicle for Dakota Digital, which, as you know, just came out with their new series. It's all factory look. It's pretty unreal. So I'm excited. We don't even have the instruments yet, but the truck's all wired up. They gave me all the modules and everything. So AZ Wire Pro threw that in this week. I was just there testing it all last night. It's, it's badass, but we're just waiting on the instruments from Dakota Digital interior with uh, elevated designs. And then it comes back, we'll throw on the hood finish some minor stuff and get it on a trailer, take it to SEMA. So for the audience, Dakota um, pretty much has been in the same spot that I can remember, and they don't have a big booth that would um, allow them to have a, a truck in their booth or a vehicle in their booth. But when you're a vendor, you're going to get a spot or if you choose to have one or two or whatever, and they probably it's probably a little bit of a premium that they'll pay for, but... So what will happen is guys will show up and they'll say, okay, here we are on Saturday morning. Here's all the things you're checked in. You're with Dakota. Okay, here's where we're going to put you in this kind of locale. And I assume that's what's probably been conveyed to you as well. Yep. Okay. So that's that's awesome. And I'll tell you one reason why um, some people want to be in Central Hall. I understand. But um, I think sometimes outside is pretty rad and you get a lot of people outside. You get a lot of uh, a lot of exposure outside and i think with that color it's gonna pop um i said it to sam last year from c minus i said it to i think again travis from pro performance it's really cool when you see the different colors change you guys were inside last year and you had crazy changes that happening every day this time you'll be outside and you'll get to see you know a lot of different uh angles that'll even with this color this you know somewhat safe color one thing that I, I look forward to seeing, Tanner, this one's for you. Did you build those headers? Because those are probably some of the coolest headers I've ever seen. Um, I wasn't able to fabricate those. A buddy of ours had built those, especially for this swap. He built those out of stainless steel so that we could move the cab as far forward as possible. And Well, we needed to have room for the big 22-inch wheels. So originally we were mocking up with 24s. And um, they're just, you know, completely one-off custom headers that they, they clear the firewall barely. Um, they clear the steering shaft barely. Um, they clear the wheels and tires barely. It was just kind of one of those things where it had to be done right. And uh, we had a, a very good friend, you know, um, awesome fabricator, Jake. He fabricated those up. And, yeah, I agree. We, we, we sandblasted them after they were welded, polished them, and um, – they're getting some color now. Yeah, they they look great. I agree with you there. Well, next time lie to me cuz I, I I was like, dude, I'm going to I'm going to serve him up a big fat juicy one here. He's going to hit it out of the park. And you still hit it out of the park, but uh, I think it's cool you gave your buddy kudos, but uh I did expect to to hear you, you know, I I I worked on them for 48 days. Uh <laughs> they were they were the, they're my token. This is my 10th prototype. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was mock up. Robbie kept yelling at me and whipping me. Hey, they weren't right. Uh the, you know, I, I hate this. <laughs> I hate this truck because of the headers uh it's awesome well both of you um 
it's going to be cool to see you guys up there. I'll tell you what, your recipe, however it came together from 17 to 18, uh, when I say recipe, the people that you have on board, a lot of the people that we that I reach out to to get behind C10 Talk, that I reach out to to be involved with whatever I'm building at the time, it's not just because they say yes. We reach out to the, the right company, the company that we want to not only represent, but be re- represented by. And uh, and you're killing it on that end. Uh, you've got some high end people, some obviously Dakota. I, you know, I couldn't we could do a whole show on how much I love not only the guys, but uh, their gauges. And uh, you're going to be running the RTXs. I think a couple other guys are going to be running them. Um, so that'll be good to to showcase that. Anything else? I mean, you guys are you guys are killing it, man. Thanks. I appreciate the kind words, man. Yeah, no, it's been quite the ride. I'm excited to fucking drive this thing. Yeah, yeah, I, I assume you're not driving it there. You're going to drive it, uh, tow it up, but then you'll be ripping, I'm sure, up and down the streets of, of Phoenix and getting ready for the get down and getting ready for good guys. And that's what's so fun about, uh, yep. you know, uh, Phoenix. And, and what we do here is we get to uh, SEMA and then boom, two weeks later, we're right into it with, with uh, the get down and then over to, to good guys. So I'm sure you guys will be putting some, the cool thing oh, yeah. is to hear you too and kind of go back, but it's crazy to think one thing you said, it just kind of popped in my mind was you had to maybe cut corners a little bit for 2017, but now you get a chance to let's do let's do this and then we'll take it out because okay? because i don't want to go too long but how is it that i feel like I mean, this might be more of a question for tanner i feel like guys don't even want to look at their trucks probably for maybe maybe this is a bad part about phoenix and the good guys and and they get down but i feel like guys don't even want to look at their trucks they get they load it up they put it on the trailer they go home. Let's say a guy who's not going to come to Phoenix. Let's say a guy who who's going to go back to Wisconsin, go back to your hometown. I feel like they don't even want to look at these things for a while. You guys had the opportunity to, to possibly take that break, and then uh, and then just kind of um, all right. Let's go back, and and I can see Robbie calling you. All right, dude, we're going to make this happen again. Let's sit down and let's talk about what needs fixed. And did that happen? And did you find out or change more than you even thought you would? No, that's exactly it. You nailed it on the head with that one. I mean, we we had about four months to get this truck together for SEMA last year. Uh, started sometime like early July, and um, you know, just we some of the parts we didn't even have till a couple weeks before SEMA. I mean, there was there was the the couple of weeks stretch where we were crunching really hard. I mean, we we put the bed wood on for the first time six or seven hours before SEMA. I mean, this, this thing literally rolled into the trailer and we drove straight up to SEMA um, from Phoenix and we made it to our loading time by about 10 minutes. I mean, that's how down to the wire we were on this thing. So when we got to take a little break off when it was getting painted and it came back to my shop, we just sat down, we made a list. We just went through to make sure everything was flawless. I mean, we polished the radiator, polished the radiator lines, um, all the wirings, it's all, it's all tucked, it's all hidden. You know, stainless braided lines everywhere, just tucked, clean, show quality. So, I mean, we we definitely had the chance to relax and take a step back and look at what we want to do different for this year. And we, we're kind of taking our time. We're not we're not super stressed on crunching, but we definitely got some work to do yet before we're ready for this year. And uh, I think we're a little bit more relaxed this year. So I'm gonna just kind of sit back and enjoy the show this year. Last year was my first year and my head was just spinning from being up for days straight and seeing SEMA for the first time and having a truck there and watching these guys wrap it. It was just all insane. I just, it was, I was out of my reality there. Robbie, how about from your perspective, um, how much easier was it from a marketing angle that you could call people and say, I've already got one under my belt. I'm taking it back and I'm redoing it and I want your shit on the truck. Yeah, much easier. There wasn't a whole lot that we redid. It was more about, hey, man, we, we already delivered on this. Like you said before, like when you deliver one and deliver it to or beyond expectations, they're happy. Well, then you can take that to, to you know, company B and say, hey, you know, we, we wanted to reach out before, like All American Billet, for example. I reached out to them two weeks before SEMA last year because I wanted, I, I hand select these guys and say, I want your products. I want to represent you and who you stand for, who you stand behind me and help me in this way. 
they said, dude, we locked in our SEMA vehicles six months ago, <laughs> you know? So like chances like that, I got to reconnect with Shane over at all American billet and, and get that kicked off. And now we got a badass full polish, you know, full front drive kit. So stuff like that, that maybe we were late, uh, late to the party where, where these companies already locked down, you know, their vehicles or, or, um, their budgets for the year, then, then we got to reconnect for this year, but yeah, it definitely made it easier. All right. Well, I think you guys are, um, you're amazing. You're impressive. Um, I'm, I'm kudos to both of you for doing what you're doing. And I think you're going to learn cause I think I could see you going back. I don't see, I don't see it being a one and a two and, and you know, whatever, right. I think your marketing is going to take off and continue to take off. I think you're fab, you're, you're building, um, for you, Tanner. And, and now that you're with hubcap, I mean, uh, like uh, uh, before air, I can't speak enough about, you know, um, both Nick and Mike. I think you, the cool thing is, is now that you've seen it and been there once very stressful and once less stressful, it, it'll, it'll probably pay dividends when you are, uh, 35 and, and in, you know, 45 and so on and so forth. What'll happen for Tanner is he's going to end up saying, well, oh yeah, I'll build that one for, you know, Robbie. Oh yeah. I'll build that one for Ronnie and I'll build that one for Johnny. And next thing you know, he's like, fuck, I got three of them. And now I'm back to how I was when I was 20, whatever in 2017 and that level of stress, but that's all right. People do it. And, uh, you know, that means that you've only been successful. So C10 talk, C10 nation. We only wish both of you, uh, Robbie success and Tanner. So Tanner, you are Tanner. Um, so it's at rad underscore fab 13 rad fab 13. Yeah. And then Robbie, we'll let Robbie tell you why he's a cartel, but Robbie Keller is uh, a Robbie cartel. And uh, you can follow both of them. Obviously you can follow Dakota digital. And then uh, both of them have, you know, pretty good builds on uh, follow along with their build and with uh, the cover girl and there'll be a, a showcase vehicle. So we'll uh, do some following up with you here in a few weeks at SEMA. Thanks Ronnie. All right, man. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thanks for your time. Have a good night. C10 Nation. We love our vintage trucks for their style, but those stock gauges are just old. When you're ready to freshen up your cab with the latest and best instrument system out there, go with Dakota Digital. They've got multiple styles available in full digital and analog with plenty of options. VHX comes in a few different colors, whereas the high-tech HDX series lets you pick your own colors anytime. Damn, son. There's even an app so you can set it up with your smartphone. Talk about rad. Integration with OEM or aftermarket EFI systems is no problem either. Available modules make new instruments basically a plug-in affair. Want to add power locks, cruise control, and LED taillights? Dakota Digital has what you need and a whole lot more. Their website is packed with electronic accessories to bring modern features to your classic truck. So hit them up. It's dakotadigital.com. I guarantee you'll love them. dakotadigital.com. Marquet has been in business for over 40 years. It all started in the original owner's garage. From humble beginnings of a couple parts in a garage to a two-building manufacturing facility making over 6,000 parts, Marquet has grown to be one of the country's premier truck parts manufacturers. They not only design the products, but also design the tooling to build the products, guaranteeing quality control. They have made their original parts from the original trucks. Aluminum strips are double polished, creating a mirror finish and crystal clear anodized. They use the highest quality, hand-selected, show-quality wood that will hold up over time. Why? Because it's kiln-dried to precision moisture levels, specifically for Marquet. They stock oak, pine and mini exotics guaranteeing extremely fast delivery all parts are manufactured in-house in oklahoma city usa they offer quality parts built by americans for old american made trucks so when you're looking for body moldings bed strips bed wood and so much more think mar k that's mar-k.com what up what up c10 nation SEMA 10, cruising, cranking, making it happen, and uh, reaching out to Waylon. Waylon Kane Crumry, by way of Chattanooga, Tennessee, um, kind of uh, got some uh, Cali roots there. So uh, Waylon works for TMI, 
And uh, what we got today is we got him talking about a 67 C10. We're going to find out a little bit about how Waylon got this truck, where it's going to be, and uh, part of the SEMA 10 episode. So, Waylon, welcome to C10 Talk, my brother. Hey, Ronnie. Thanks for having me. You got it, man. Uh, how's things out in Tennessee? Uh, no complaints, man. Falls kicked in. Weather's perfect right now. Yeah, it's got to be a little different. So you uh, you were out in L.A. for, you know, Cali for uh, how long? And then now you've got a complete and total different uh, perspective on, uh, you know, seasons and where you live and everything else. Yeah, that's we actually have seasons out here. That's the funny thing. Um, but, yeah, I was 15 years uh, scattered around Southern California, Long Beach, Riverside, Lake Elsinore. Um, and I've been with uh, TMI products for uh, eight years now, but about two years ago, um, after getting married, having two kiddos, um, decided to move out east a little bit. I got family out this way, and uh, thankfully TMI kept me on, and uh, it's up working great. Cool. Yeah, that's actually uh, that's a good story, and I assume you uh, enjoy living out there. You like it, slower pace? Yeah, much slower pace. Like I said, the, the leaves are actually changing now. In California, you don't get that, uh, so it, it's nice to actually have seasons back. Cool. Well, uh, let's talk about uh, 67 C10 seasons. Let's talk about how uh, how you got this truck and uh, why you're going to SEMA, why you're taking it to SEMA, and what your plans are. Yeah, absolutely. I got this truck as soon as I moved out here. Um, I picked up a 67 big window. Here's the, here's the crazy thing. It's a long bed, and I kept it a long bed. Um, but, man, I picked it up for a song um, and was just using it for daily stuff. You know, I was just for all the reasons you need a truck. And um, it was nice and dependable, and I had no plans of building it or changing it except for maybe a disc brake upgrade. Um, and then uh, SEMA came along. We started talking about next year's SEMA, and the original plan actually was to bring my 61 Continental convertible. But after getting that, my, my paint guy, from, um, Chris Slee from Kiwi Customs, came down and uh, convinced me that might be a bad idea. I guess that the Continental had a lot more to go than I was going to be able to do in a year. Um, so all eyes turned to the C-10. Wow. So, uh, sounds like that, uh, continental will be a, a family project that uh, you, uh, might incorporate your kids with. It sounds like a long-term thing. And, and then you say, Hey, well, let's jump on the C10 and, uh, it's kind of cool. You're keeping it a long bit, a little different. Yeah. And that's the thing is, uh, when I, you know, I got the truck, I had all the trim on it, all the, all the chrome on it, all the, all the emblems and all that kind of stuff. And what I wanted to do, it seems like, it seems like, and not to knock it in any way, shape, or form, everybody's got a different bag, but it seems like most of the trucks I've seen at SEMA, I mean, I think I've seen one long bed, maybe two in the last five years. Um, and everybody, I mean, they usually go real far to the extreme, where everything's shaven, everything's bagged, everything's on the ground, and, you know, it's been chopped and it's been shortened. Um, so what I did is I kind of wanted to ride a fine, subtle line with it. This is my first SEMA build. i um, just get that out there. So a lot of pressure for me to try and do something that kind of fit me, but was also uh, a little bit different. So I kept it a long bed despite, I mean, everybody from my manager on down <laughs> tried to convince me to cut it. Um, I just couldn't do it. So I got all the, there's a lot of factory throwbacks to what it looked like originally. But then again, I modernized a lot of the things that I felt needed. Um, like I said, I didn't chop it and I didn't bag it. It's actually sitting on ride tech coilovers. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong. We, we increased, uh, you know, wheel size. We're going with um, U.S. Banks as a set of Templars. I think everybody's familiar with the Templars. I uh, talked to Paul over there. He actually agreed to make uh, the first set of six-slug Templars. So I got a six-spoke U.S. Mags Templar on here. I think think it's the first one they've ever made. Uh, but those will be available now. And then, of course, it's sitting uh, right behind there. I had to you know, in increase the braking for it. So it's sitting on uh, CPP 14-inch uh, six-piston brakes. So you know, we made the adjustments where we needed to. Um, but still, when you see the truck, you'll understand it. I tried to keep it. Uh, you know, true to its homage, I guess, or true to its heritage. Well, I think you talk a little bit about the recipe, and a lot of guys are going down the same road, right? So they like chocolate chip cookies. They like uh, grandma's oatmeal raisin. And it's easy to kind of probably fall into that, whereas you're saying, listen, there's so many different ways that we've seen the 6772s built. How can I, how can I pay respect to not only what was already there, and just spicing that up a little bit. And you guys, honestly, have done a really shitty job, but a great job of not showing us so much of the truck so that now I want to see this truck because you, you guys tease it really good, uh, but you don't really give us that much, especially from the whole truck 
perspective of the the truck sitting current stance long bed you know uh on the truck on the on the frame so we don't get that full perspective and we'll look forward to that especially when we get to SEMA yeah one thing I'll be, you'll be the first one I tell um because I, I know this is going to air closer to SEMA so I can tell you so with the truck what I really wanted to do was kind of keep it period correct but still be custom um and I, I took that idea in my rendering over to guys at Kiwi uh, Kiwi Customs there and um Chris and I believe his guy there, Nacho, came up with the, the hood. And, and again, I, I've never seen this hood done before. I sent it out to a couple of guys in the industry. They've never seen this hood done before. Um, somebody will probably call in and correct you later that it, and maybe it has been, but we've never seen it. What we did was we took that huge, iconic 67, 68 C10 hood, and we integrated a 67 Chevelle hood, or the Super Sport, those, those vents that everybody knows so well. I mean, they're iconic for a 67 Chevelle and I, I wanted to do something that maybe could have been a factory option back for a 67 C10 if they had something, you know, like an SS C10. I mean, today you can buy a Raptor, you can buy a Lightning, whatever the case may be. Back then there really wasn't a sport truck, but I'd like to think that maybe if they did offer that, it would have this kind of hood on it. Well, my pictures just came through, dude. So um, for the audience, you're going to be blown away the, the way that this flows you guys, Nacho and Kiwi, they brought it together extremely well. I mean, honestly, this it 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 looks so nice. What what you what you've done, you've taken in my mind now that I can see this. What you've done is you've taken different eras of popularity and styling, and you've morphed it into kind of one one truck. So you know, right now we we see a lot of like. Uh, smoothies we see a lot of uh you know transport style smoothies kind of you know dell did that with the 60 to 66 trucks and then it got real popular throw a hubcap on there what you've done is you've taken some old school gm ss power you've taken some color you've taken some some the orange you know which is popular in different eras obviously with me i love orange you've taken big hoops big brakes You've brought it all together, and what what I see now, now that I see the picture, is you've taken uh, and, and some of the white. And for the audience, white top, white, white a lot, yeah, yeah, white bed, white inner fender wells. Um, you've you've brought a, a lot of different eras together and morphed that into one truck. That uh, dude, I, I'm pleasantly surprised, especially because it is a long bed. So to to take that all together and put that that way, it. Um, it, again, it makes it uh, it makes it classy. It makes it um, powerful because of that SS style, and then it just makes it um, again. I don't know how you did it, man. You've got uh, like twenty five percent less is more, twenty five percent power, twenty five percent bling, and twenty five percent. I guess you know Waylon. <laughs> well, hey, man, that, that's a huge compliment, and I, I really appreciate. It. Like I said this is my first time doing it. I. I I wanted to do something that was subtle but custom. I mean, that's kind of what we're, we're known for at TMI. It's, we're not screaming, you know, custom, but we're not doing something factor original. We, I've always been a big fan of doing something that's it's custom enough to get your attention, but it still pays homage to where it came from. So to, to hear you say that means a lot, man, especially this being my first build. So thank you for that. Yeah, have fun cleaning that. <laughs> I'm obsessively compulsive disordered, so it'll work out just fine. Yeah, there's a lot of white there. Oh, wait, wait. It'll, it'll look good. Stop. I don't know how Stop. the roads are, but I, I do like the chalk on the driveway, so I can tell you've got uh, the same kind of uh, kids artistic with uh, that I do because you've got some, some classy chalk there. It looks good. Yeah, at least they drew on the driveway, not on the truck. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> 67 big back window now one thing that's cool about a big back window a lot of people don't realize in a 67 is they're always like well more so craigslist world or back of the auto trader days you know real hard to find small back window well a small back window is probably you know I, i'd venture to say two-thirds of 67s if not more are going to be a small back window so you've got the panoramic option for the 67 and uh that's that's a cool thing you know to see that because i'll tell you what my son has a 66 small and you got blind spotted like crazy you go to turn and it's like mm -hmm. shit i can't see i want that big back window and mm -hmm. i think it's really a sexy thing about the 67 72 cab when you do have that uh you know that big back window and you'll see i think gm just 
put a big stack of them, those cabs in the corner. And then what they ended up using them on was uh, all the big trucks. Because if you think about like a grain truck, um, you know, a C50, they're going to have a big stake bed thing anyway. So they're completely blinded. Plus maybe for the, you know, whatever's going to fly forward and hit the glass. They're like, hell, we'll just recycle all these small back windows or not recycle, but we'll save them. And then you'll, you'll see a 67 or a 72, which is, you know, a grain truck, but it'll be a small back window. So because I assume they just held all those smaller windows for that. And they're like, dude, people like this big back window and it's probably safer. Yeah, that's just one one of the many things I like about the truck. Um, and like I said, keeping it in a long bed is just something. I, to me, it feels more like a truck that way. Um, there there may be more short beds being built, but I think the, you know don't quote me. Don't there's no stats here, but I'd have to guess there's more long beds out there. Um, so I, I think a lot of the long bed guys off the forum stuff are going to be excited to see a long bed. I know of two others being built for this year too, so maybe I picked it up at the right time. <laughs> I think you're exactly right. I think there's way more long beds. I think you're seeing long beds. If you think about the lineage, they're going to be more of a grandpa style truck. You can get them better in, in nicer shape than something that was probably a shorty somewhere. Somehow somebody got a hold of a shorty and, and uh, you know, whether they drove the rat's ass out of it or not. But uh, but nonetheless, I remember, too, because thinking of TMI and, and your company and, and where you work, but uh, I can't remember if it's Dylan, Denver. Dustin Dallas. It's one of those. And he had his uh, long bed to short bed conversion at SEMA three years ago, maybe, maybe three, I think three. I think it was four, and you hit the nail on the head there somewhere. It was it was Denver, and he, I think it was his dad's old truck. It was a, a C20. And yeah, he chopped it down to a short bed and dropped that thing on the ground. Um, he still got it. Uh, it still goes to shows for TMI. So yeah. we, we try and keep them yeah. in the fleet. That's how we build them all internally. Yeah, you guys do a great job of repping the C10 Nation. There's been a, a C10 truck in the, that uh, that booth for at least four years. Because if you think about Denver, I think there was a square body. I think Larry had a square body. Then you guys yep. had the Blazer. Big, big, we got, yep. mm-hmm. we yeah. got a 73, 73 square body, uh, 72 Blazer. Um, we built that. I think Denver's was a 71, if I remember correctly. Um, and then my 67 will be there. So yeah, we've, we actually, we had James auto 66 in there. Um, yep. we, we've always kept a truck. And like I said, we came into truck, f- I want to say about five years ago and I'm debuting a new interior in mine too. Some new options, some, some new products. Of course, that's where you do it is at SEMA. So it may be pretty from the outside, but it's, it's inside. We want people to come check out. Okay. So speaking about the inside, what Besides TMI, we want to come see what you've got new there. What about uh, interior options, uh, system, AC, uh, anything like that that you've added or upgraded on from when you got the truck? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it is uh – it's wired completely from painless. Um, actually, you know, Jeremy Rice, I was fortunate enough to be have him fly out here and, and help me wire this thing because, uh, granted, I've been, I've been trying to do as much as I can on my own, but I'm a smart enough man to raise my hand when I need help. And um, even as painless as the painless kits can be, um, experience there is always a nice thing. So Jeremy came out and lent me a couple of days getting it wired up, and uh, when he was here, we plugged in. We got Dakota Digital in the dash. Um, and then I was fortunate enough to get the uh, the new Invent system from Resto Mod Air. Um, I was blown away when I saw that thing. I called those guys over there. I don't know if you've seen it. It's where the the, the vents are actually the dials. Yeah, I, I think some of that progression is just so cool how they've done that. And uh, again, they continue to push the limit as well. Last year they had. Uh, Oh, blood, sweat, and beard out there in his truck, and uh, Casey was in their booth, and they continue to push it, and they have some really, really rad shit. And actually, Brian Val has the double like Typhoon in his bourbon this year, so we're getting a lot of uh, a lot of good. Again, just seeing it, like you said, you've got to when you go to SEMA, we're able to kind of see things, and it's weird because it is a overload. You're looking at so many different things, and it's almost like, oh, now I really want to go back and look at Wayland's truck. Now I want to go back and look at this truck and see some of those finite details because you're moving so fast. You're trying to catch so many different things, depending on if you're there for one day, two days, four days, whatever it might be. It is a, it is an overload. Well, I'm there for eight days. I wish it was four days. But eight <laughs> days? What day are you getting in? Yeah, getting load Friday, in, load out, friend. Friday to Friday or, fr- or Friday to Sunday or what? I'm there. I fly in Saturday and I leave Sunday. Oh, man. Yeah. Sunday. yeah, busy, busy, busy. So how's the truck getting out? Where? Uh, how are you getting it out there? 
Um, I've got a guy hauling it out there for me, um, and it, it, it leaves in about seven days from the time we're talking right now. Just There's a few more things to button up on it. Um, the 5.3 is giving us a little bit of trouble, but um, I, nothing I don't think will happen you know, by the time we get it ready to roll in seven days should be no problem at all. Okay, so what about paint? Uh, did you keep it original? I, I see the orange. It's kind of uh, it's hard to see because the the way they got the the light, but you've got the you know I look at that kind of tangelo tangerine style orange color. I think yeah. it's going to look really cool under the lights. Was that original color? You you're just very like orange. Close. Yeah, you're very close to the tangelo there. I, I looked at that color, but um, again, Chris over at, at Kiwi Customs, we were going back and forth, back and forth. He knew what I wanted. I kept sending these pictures. And we worked with uh, a rep over at Matrix Automotive Finishes, and I hope I didn't drive him crazy because I was particular as could be. But um, it is a, a Lamborghini California orange. Um, that's why it color shifts, and it really does. In the sun, it color shifts from a, from like a, a yellow down to the to the um, the orange. Um, in my garage, it's just straight orange, and then the white. Man, my wife's got a Ford Flex. I look at the pearl on that white every day. Um, and that's the white we use. We we tinted it a little warmer, but it has such a great pearl in it. That's what's on the cap, under the hood, in the bed. Um, I, I kind of brought the white throughout. Well, it's all about balance, so that's what I think is going to be cool. And when you talk about some of the different, uh, you know, the chrome and then your U.S. mags and you bring it all together, um, and I'm sure knowing TMI and knowing you guys, there's going to be a, a way of incorporating that into the interior as well. And uh, I look forward to seeing your door panels. I look forward to seeing your seats and really that whole kind of interior feel. Uh, what I think you guys do a good job of is where, you know, it's easy to kind of focus on the exterior. People see it. But obviously, when we go over to the TMI booth, we're going to look at the outside. It's going to draw us in. James uh, Otto's truck was a perfect example a few years back. Well, in the Blazer, of course, because how much interior are we looking at? You know, we, we draw in because of the metal. Oh, there's a C10. Oh, there's, look at those wheels. Oh, those U.S. mags look freaking bitching on that truck. Oh, shit, look at that interior. And then you get drawn in, and obviously what you're trying to do is working because that's, that's how I feel when I walk over there. Well, thanks. I mean, I ask everybody what color they thought the interior should be, and I'll tell you, this year's saddle is the new black. Everybody and their mother is putting saddle or a brown or some kind of, you know, whiskey interior, and including myself. That's the first picture I, the first thing I thought of when I saw the truck in the orange. And I tell you what, I went the furthest thing from brown I could do. The the more people that told me it needed to be brown, the more I knew I couldn't do it. Um, it is not a traditional color in, <laughs> inside the truck. Um, it is not a traditional pattern. It is not. It is not what you'd expect walking up. So like you said, you you were shocked when you walked up on the Blazer and saw that bright yellow interior. Um, I didn't go bright yellow, but I, I do think people will be shocked when they open the door and see what color we did go with. All right, cool. I mean, that's, uh, that's yeah, that's not what I would have thought. It, it's funny. You, what you On one end, you're saying, well, I want to keep it long bed because I want to have a little tradition there and pay, you know, the kind of the, the long bed nation. And then you're like, uh, and now I got this bright green interior. Now I know you probably don't have bright green interior, but I'm just saying it's it's a, it's a balance. And the bottom line is it's your truck. You do how you want it, and I can't wait to see it. Well, awesome. Yeah, like I said, we had to do something unexpected. If, if you open the door and see what you expected, I'm not doing my job, especially at SEMA. So what else? Uh, you've got the Ride Tech suspension on there. You've got uh, you've got the U.S. Mags. You've got uh, uh, the Killer. What? How about bed floor? That's a that's a thing that's always really nice when we look at these trucks. Did you? What did you end up doing for a bed floor? I went with Marque. Um, I know their stuff. I know the quality of their stuff. We've used it on other trucks in the past. Um, all my trim is Marque. Um, you don't have to worry about it not fitting. It's it's, it's awesome stuff. And then I've got uh, one of their oak beds in the back. Um, so it's, uh, it was originally a steel floor, but again, we wanted to bring the wood in there. Um, another thing under the hood, we, we tried to do something a little bit different. Um, it's white under the hood in the fenders, all that firewalls, all shaved, but it's all white to match the cap. Um, and sitting in the middle is a five, three, uh, trick flow cam, trick flow heads, uh, Doug Thurley headers, um, all American billet serpentine and hinges, which I love. They're some of my favorite things under the hood, just cause they, they really just pop, especially cause I did the black. And against that white, that looks really good. And sitting up on top of the engine, um, we did a, a retro LS system from Flytech. So it looks kind of vintage and an air cleaner on it like it was back in the day. Um, tried to hide it a little bit. So yeah, we, we, we didn't go too crazy under the hood because we did want it to be 
reliable and actually something I could build in the time frame I got. Again, I'm not an experienced builder. I've you know car enthusiast all my life and uh, been in the industry for you know 15 years. But this was my first build of this caliber, so I did want to keep it within my my realm of possibilities. Well, and like you said, it makes it reliable. Something happens because you are you know the baseline builder, then you'll know you know how to troubleshoot that and make the reliability go up. And, and I see these guys that whether they do it or they have somebody else do it and then, you know, they struggle because it's like, well, shit, I can't figure this out. I can't figure this out. I'm trying to tune this. I'm trying to do that. And it sounds like you've, you've turned uh, it into kind of a balance where you can, you know, you can, you can figure it out or fix the problems if there should be any. And if not, I've brought in some outside help. I had some, some great guys from up North actually drive down here to help me. Um, I got a buddy here at Rivermont Paint and Body, my buddy Jim, He's come over here giving me way too many weekends of his life to, to help me do things like put the glass in and help run the brake lines and that kind of fun stuff. So I, I've definitely had some help. Again, I, I'm not ashamed to raise my hand when I need help. Um, maybe too proud at some moments, but when it's uh, when it's down to the wire, I, I'll take the help where I can get it, that's for sure. What would you say? So for the audience, uh, they're sitting at home, they're sitting at their office, they're in the shop. Um, what would you tell a guy, hey, if you're thinking about doing a SEMA build, uh, from the perspective of a guy who's not a SEMA builder, you know, but hey, I, I, I've got enough to get myself in trouble here a little bit. I'm, I, I know how to wrench. What, what was your biggest struggle? What was your biggest uh, hurdle that you had to get over? Um, oh, geez, it, everything fought me a little bit. It, it just kind of, I don't, it's one of those cases where I just didn't know what I didn't know. Um, I was on the phone a lot with, with good old Jeremy Rice over there. Um, and his patience is astounding because he hasn't gotten sick of me yet. But um, there's just a lot of things that are so simple that I just, you know, you can't Google and you can't figure out. Um, but I've just had to sit there and kind of play with it. So if it's supposed to take an hour, it probably took me two, maybe two and a half hours to do. Um, but as, as a general, I mean, would I do this again? Yeah, especially knowing what I know now and, and, and the kind of the order in which to do things. Again, I've been around this forever. We we've, we've built I don't even know, 15 cars and trucks through TMI, but I've not been the hands-on builder. Um, it definitely gives you a lot better perspective and respect for the guys who really bring these things to the you know top-notch next level builds. Well, and like you said, so you're at TMI back in the day, you're in Cali, and those guys, you've got uh, you know so many different hands and so many different thoughts and minds, whereas now you're you know building you know on the border of Tennessee and Georgia, and you're like, uh, it's 1030 at night or whatever, or in the morning, and I don't want to call the West Coast or whatever, and it's just not the same. You, you, not, not on an island, but you're, you're not in Cali. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, there's been some disconnect there as far as trying to ask questions about stuff, and I'm either asking first thing in the morning or late at night because, you know, how it is when you're out in the garage, time escapes you. It'll be 1 o'clock in the morning when I'm, I'm you know, realize what time it is. So, uh, again, I'm, I'm trying to balance it all um, you know, between my full-time job, my two kids and wife, and uh, the, my wife's actually been pretty understanding of <laughs> not gotten into much trouble over the bill. She's been real supportive. Um, but uh, it leaves in, what, a week, week and a half? And uh, I'm definitely looking forward to the beers I get after it's done. Well, I think, uh, again, it's whether or not misery loves company, but I think one of the things that Jeremy does a great job, Delmo does a phenomenal job, uh, Blake Stoner, I don't know how he does it. These are just guys I'm just, you know, in my mind, probably the Ring Brothers. Some of these guys that are these these builders that do this for a living, their time management skill becomes honed. Whereas a guy like you, a guy like me, um, it's like, oh yeah, you know, I, I can figure that out in 30 minutes. And then three days later, you're like, how am I fucking on this same thing? And then it's time management. And so the more, uh, at least that's where I feel. I feel like, dude, there's no way I shouldn't have this done by, you know, the get down or by C tents in the park or whatever my next goal is. And I, I like to have those time stamps to, to, to push me, I actually have to have them. If I don't, I'll never get anything done because there's always, uh, there's life and it comes in. And when you have a wife and kids and 20 other projects and uh, a real job, that's what happens, right? It's something is always, you're like, oh, that's my number one thing for the day. And it's like, how did that become number eight that fast? And it's like, well, it did. It's, I guess that's life. So that's where I think it's respectable for me on this end. And for my listeners who I think 95% of them are like you and I, if not more so. And, uh, you know, it's respectable to hear you say very, uh, modestly, I'll raise my hand when I have to, I'm not a SEMA builder, but I'm glad that I've done this. 
Yeah, without a doubt. I, I had a buddy, uh, Jeremy Hart, over at Fullmaster, actually slapped some sense into me this week and, and just told me I need to pat myself on the back because, you know, I was beating myself up on the things that weren't done or we're having some issues with its running, you know, down the road running. And uh, he said, well, just take a break, step back, and realize what you've accomplished in basically, I think, five months. Um, and, again, when you're diving into it day after day, busting your knuckles night after night, you don't take a step back and look at the big picture of the truck that's actually, you know, my, my beater of a patinaed you know, farm truck and what it looks like. I'm looking at it right now. Um, and what it looks like compared to what it looked like this time last year is, is it one heck of a transformation. Cool. Do you have a name for this thing? Man, we've been back and forth beers after beers. We try to come up with things. And the thing is, as you said, my name at the beginning is Waylon Kane, like Kane and Abel. Um, and so my buddy was calling it the Mark of Kane, which, <laughs> which wasn't a bad name. Um, and then he wanted me to call the truck Abel, like, am I able to do this? And that stuck for quite a while. Uh, my wife and I keep calling it the C10 sickle. <laughs> it, it, it does look that juicy that I, I, you know, I could take it on a, a summer, summer, summer day out in the park, uh, have myself a little C10 sickle. You know, uh, it does look that way. But uh, I think that able thing might be kind of that. There's, I think the key is if uh, somebody walks up to it or you told them the name, you know, that that able part uh, definitely uh, digs deep. Uh, you could always just go with the able sickle, I guess. But you'll figure that out. Well. Cain and Abel, you know, it kind of fits, but we were going to spell it, spell it A-B-L-E, like, I mean, legitimately, am I able to pull this off? Um, so it, it might stick. We'll see. Um, like I said, it kept bouncing back and forth. So before it was the Green Acre because it was a long bed green truck, but uh, I think Abel will probably stick. Cool. It could always be the Orange Acre. But you'll, you, like I said, uh, that's one thing about naming, you know, rigs. They just, uh, they, they kind of work their way out, and sometimes you'll name it, and you'll be like, nah, that's not it. I'm changing it up. And then finally something will happen, you'll be like, dude, that's, uh, I like that. The kids like it. Mama likes it. And uh, and it just works. So, Waylon, uh, we're going to see you in about two weeks. Uh, we're going to see you out there. We're going to make sure we come by and check out this interior. And for my audience, uh, I don't think we're going to see any pictures until then. So uh, we'll make sure we get over there. We do uh, some uh, some social media and kind of share that with you guys so you can see uh, Abel's interior, uh, you know, Waylon's truck, and uh, everything else that goes along with it. So uh, thanks for, for coming on. And, and uh, any other shout-outs you want to throw out there, or are you good to go? I've had so much. Like I said, just a lot of my buddies that have come down to help, man. They, they know who they are, and I can't, can't thank them enough. The appreciation is through the roof. Okay, awesome, awesome. Well, it sounds like you're still working out a few things, some shakedown stuff. Good luck this next week, and uh, if there's anything we can do, please let us know. Waylon Kane. TMI Products. We'll see you in, uh, like I said, about two weeks, brother. All right, man. Good chat with you. Classic Performance Products, CPP, has a few new products out. Let's start with their new Hydrostop Street Beast Hydraulic Assist Systems. CPP's Hydrostop Street Beast is a direct fit, high performance hydraulic brake assist system that works great when running a performance engine setup and there is not enough vacuum produced to operate a traditional booster. Simply plumb in your power steering system and share the fluid reservoir with your power steering pump to your high performance brake system. Assembled with all new parts, this unit puts out an amazing 1800 PSI at the wheels. How about their new 14 inch big brake kits? CPP now offers a six piston, 14 inch big brake system for your Chevy truck featuring two-piece pre-assembled drilled, slotted, and zinc-coated rotors, six-piston billet aluminum calipers with DOT-compliant dust and weather seals, premium stainless hardware, and braided stainless brake hoses. These brakes work with their modular and Corvette-style spindles. Remember, use C10 Talk at checkout and save 10% off your order. Damn, son, 10%? www.classicperform.com Hey guys, I've been buying my truck parts from BrothersTrucks.com for over 20 years now. These guys just aren't selling parts. They build trucks. They have their own trucks. They attend shows. They're part of our community. I saw Jim Flanders at C10s in the Park in Texas and also at Dino's Get Down out here in Arizona. And that's why I continue to buy my parts from Brothers. One thing I remember Jim Flanders saying when I interviewed him for the podcast, when we buy parts, we buy the best parts possible so that you, the consumer, will get the best parts possible. Sure, they have the opportunity to buy a lesser made, lesser quality part, but they know that it's going to you, the C10 Nation. So when you buy your parts from BrothersTrucks.com, rest assured you're getting the best part possible. 
So when you're looking to restore your 1947 through 87 Chevy or GMC truck, go to brotherstrucks.com. That's brotherstrucks.com. All right, all right. Pacific Northwest, uh, we got our buddy Lion McClanahan, and I tell you what, every time I, I interview this guy, it's kind of a, a project with a meaning, uh, a cause. Uh, it's always fun to catch up with him. It's always about this time that uh, we're looking at what he's going to bring to SEMA, and uh, this year is a little different. We've got two different builds, but uh, primarily, you know, when you think about the the project for a cause, I go back to the ALS truck, the square body that was in the Covercraft uh, booth. Then last year you had the BC30 that was also in the Covercraft booth. And uh, Lion and I joke, we've got a little thing going where when they do their unveiling, uh, we're there and, and we video it. And we've had some uh, astronomical numbers on these on these reveals. And uh, hopefully this year is no different. So Lion, uh, welcome from, uh, from Finish Line. Welcome to C10 Talk and uh, the SEMA 10 episode. And... Uh, Catching up is always fun. So how's it going? It's going good. Thank you. How you doing? Good, good. I mean, just like, you know, you guys kind of grind and getting all these out. And, uh, you know, we always kind of look at uh, what the Finish Line Speed Shop's doing and what you're bringing to the table. And uh, another great cause that you guys always kind of find that inspiration. And I almost think where some guys are probably, you know, maybe a week or two week out or maybe a month they're they're probably getting tired you know and i think with you it's one thing to be tired but because there's always an inspiration behind the build it's got to keep you really motivating and your guys and maybe maybe you're down and you know one of the guys is up and it's like hey this is what we're doing it for and and uh you're doing this truck for julie why don't you tell us about you know maybe a little bit about the cause and and what's your thoughts on the truck and, and bringing the truck down to uh to vegas here in, in a week we're doing a uh 78 GMC square body. It's uh, the truck has got some strong meaning behind it. It was a lady, Julie, that passed away from colon cancer, and her family had approached us about building a truck. And after we sat down and met, and my wife and I had talked, my wife really pushed that she wanted to have this be our 2018 project giving back truck that we do something really special for the family and to honor her and then we're going to bring it to SEMA and we're we've got it with Eddie Motorsports this year and it's just a special build that we're going to debut there they haven't seen anything from it uh Alipi Julie's husband he came out and checked it over before right before it went into paint and since paint we haven't showed him anything so the unveiling on Tuesday at SEMA is going to be a surprise for the family as well as uh, everybody at SEMA to see it. It's kind of been under wraps since the beginning. Yeah, you really haven't, um, you know, we haven't really seen anything. We see a rendering with a cover over it. Um, but again, it's kind of the the impromptu. It's the, the unveiling. And, you know, sometimes with the truck, the meaning is more than, you know, meets the eye. It is. And with the project giving back uh, this year, it's the Strong Roots truck. And it's something that we've got a core group, the team that we've put together for these, our SEMA builds and project giving back builds. And as you said, leading into it, that when the, when the days get long and the nights get really long and turn into short, short sleep nights, getting towards the last two, three weeks of the build, it's kind of what drives us. And it, it keeps it going, and this one, even with all the all the partners involved and sponsors that are involved in it, that with the family not seeing it, um, nobody, the family really hasn't seen anything of it. They don't even know what the paint color, the final paint color looks like, including Alipi. We made some changes to the paint chips that he picked out, so we've had to we've had to keep it really under wraps, um, which is why the rendering with the covers on it is. We went back and forth, and last time he was out here about a month ago, he said that he didn't want to see anything. So I get texts at least once or twice a day, and he'll call me or call Jennifer in the office, and it turns into kind of a little joke that he says he asks how the truck's doing, but he doesn't want to know. So it's, <laughs> we're just keeping it all a surprise. So will he see it when we see it? 
Yeah. Wow. That's they won't intense. say it before that. Well, yeah. So we might, we might have to get a camera on him and his family also when they see it, because, uh, uh, part of the family, it's actually a total surprise. They don't even know that it's getting done. Him and his father are the only two that actually know the truck's getting built and nobody else even knows the truck. The truck is even being built, let alone what they're coming to Vegas for. That's amazing. Now, was this truck, uh, it's intense. I think it's so cool. And what a story. And, uh, you know, I don't know uh, about Julie. I don't know how big her family is, but her husband and uh, you're saying, is it Julie's dad or is it uh, Alipi's dad? It's Alipi's dad, Gary. Was the truck in the family? Was it a, a family uh, heirloom or something like that? Or she just always liked trucks? Uh, she always liked trucks. Um, the color has the the color on the truck has to do with strong roots was something she had started. So the color is a tie of that. Um, and the year of the truck is the year that Alipi was born. Um, there's just the truck was purchased probably about a year ago, I think. So it hasn't even it's not even something that's been part of the family, but the, the meaning behind the truck and then everything that's gone into it and a bunch of the detail stuff down to coloring, everything on it um, is tied around Julie and the whole family, which is, it's made it hard because we never met her either. So we've had to learn about her and about the family basically just in a couple of meetings and some long conversations on the phone. Um, and kind of just feeling each other out and getting to know each other. And it now it's turned into almost more family on both sides. Yeah, I can imagine that uh, you, you take on, you know, I think a lot of builders take on uh, the, a love for the truck, the build, the process. I mean, uh, they, it's blood, sweat and tears, right? I mean, you guys are, you guys are grinding, you're, you're, you're building this thing. And so of course you, you, it's probably either a love hate or at times both. And then when it's done, it comes back around to love. I'm sure at times any build, it has its moments, but then when you attach a special feeling or a, a meaning, a tribute, and again, the project giving back, it all kind of goes full circle. One thing that we can do is we can kind of look at, at, you know, who you're tagging along the way. I mean, that that's at least what I've done where it's like, oh, well, let's see who he tagged. Oh, okay. So we can kind of get an idea of your recipe. You, you know, you're mixing in in the melting pot, but there's still something to be said about a 78 GMC and the color. Is it two tone? Is it single tone? How's the interior look? what they do? We can look back at the ALS truck and, uh, you know, what you did with that and some of the things that you created at the time, some of the things that were a little bit new to us and, and go back to some of that history and really the BC 30 truck, you, you know, you guys, you know, nailed it with that too. So, so you've got a little bit of a reputation to uphold. Uh, we would like to think that we try and bring our A game to SEMA. It's, uh, it is where you got to bring your A game to. And in the world of C10s in general, trying to do something outside of the box, but still stay on par with uh, style and trend and stay ahead of the curve so that you can, you can push the envelope a little bit. And some of the things that we've done on this are uh, that we've done in the past. Some of the things we haven't done at all. Um, and some, we've just been changing up and re-engineering and coming up with new ways to do things that some people may decide that they want to follow along and do. Um, we've had on all our builds, all our project giving back builds, we've had just some amazing partners and we've got a handful of partners that have been with us from the very get go. Um, from all the way back to our first one was a 67 Dodge dart that we did the dream dart and We've had companies um, that have been along the whole way. I mean, we've got painless wiring, excess batteries, Air Raid, Dakota Digital, uh, Precision came through, and Precision replacement parts with the window uh, gaskets for the dark came through literally at the last minute, two days before we were leaving on that deal. Um, 
kicker has always stepped up with some crazy sound systems for us. Um, it's we we have some long relationships with some of them. Some of them are just in the truck build. Some of the C10 stuff from the uh, ALS truck followed over to this, and some of them we've just totally changed up. Um, our wheel and our wheel package and brake package is something we've never ran before. Uh, but we've stuck with Toyo tires, which we've had since the very beginning. So it's, it's kind of been a way to, uh, some of the stuff just being released. We've got AccuAir with this one. Um, some different stuff we're running on this. It's, it's trying to push the envelope, but stay, stay with the times and the curve. And hopefully, hopefully everybody likes it as much as we do. Cause it's definitely been a love hate that is, it's more on the love side, but there's, <laughs> there's, there's some struggles that's been along the way. I feel like part of it is like a little bit of that overhaul and where it's for a cause. And, uh, you know, like with the BC 30 truck with your, you know, dually, that truck got sold. Money went to cancer where this truck, you know, it's going to be, you know, in the family and it's going to be part of the family. The hardest part about this truck is trying to think of, how it's going to work and fit the family because they've, they've had input with some and other things have been things that we've just decided we've, we've been given basically the rain to do what we want with probably 90 plus percent of it. Um, when you're trying to think about how another family is going to enjoy it, it, it does put a different twist on it, but I think it also makes it that much more special. Because as you're doing it, you're really thinking about not just when we build our own stuff, we build them how we want them or what's going to work for our family. And this one in particular is one of those that it's, well, let's see, there's kids, there's this, there's how, how is it going to be driven? What's he going to use it for? Is it going to be daily driven? Is it going to be fair weather driven? Is it going to be just used for show and trying to figure out all those aspects on it? Um, or is he going to be wanting to do smoky burnouts for the first 10, 15 times he drives it? Well, everybody wants to do smoky burnouts for the first 10 to 15 times they drive. I mean, that's a, we know that, you know, <laughs> of course. Well, that's why on. we had to start with, that's why we had to start with a, uh, eating fruit track in the rear end to make sure it leaves two good fat black marks down. Yeah. Two's better than one skinny Winnie. So, Okay, so 78 GMC, strong roots, um, square body. Uh, can't, I mean, I love that grill, so I can't wait to, to see that kind of unfold. And kind of continuing along, we've got another GMC in the mix, and if, if, if one's good, then two's better. What can you tell us about the second one? <laughs> well, we're a glutton for punishment, apparently, because uh, if, you, if you're having fun with one SEMA build, why not throw a second one in there, right? Because stress doesn't matter at all at this stage. Oh, my God. We're, uh, we're, <laughs> we're bringing a uh, 66 GMC Suburban that uh, kind of the, the motto behind this vehicle is basically if you could buy a 66 GMC Suburban today with all the creature comforts that you can get in a brand new 2018 GMC Suburban Yukon that you could get in 66, this would be pretty close. Um, this one's got a set of Detroit steel wheels on it with the one year only GMC factory hubcaps that have been mounted to it. Um, it's on AccuAir. It's the original seafoam green colors two-tone the green and white so it's we're used we use all chrome trim on this thing kind of just to keep all the style of 66 but everything that you could ask for in 2018 four-wheel disc brakes ac uh heated seat backup camera system um fuel injection automatic overdrive i mean you name it we tried to do it it's got uh all three rows of seats in it. We went with uh, just a twist on the factory style. I mean, everything about this thing is basically a twist on the factory style is what we were going for. 
taking old school metal and wrapping it around just a, just an updated, like you said, 2018 radness, just, just fit function and functionality. Exactly. It's, uh, the kind of, the, the neat deal behind this suburban is it's, it's being built for, uh, a local car dealership for Hazelwood GMC and, 1966 was when they got their fr- the GMC franchise, and it's been in the family since 66. And they came down and they saw the uh, ALS truck at SEMA when we built that. They came they were they came down to SEMA and they checked it out after the unveiling. And the owner really really liked the ALS truck, um, but most of his classic vehicles he liked stock. But the ALS truck, just because it it had a bunch of tweaks to it, it really piqued his interest. And that's kind of how this truck came about, is it was trying to figure out how to build a truck that would appear like a stock vehicle and that could represent their them getting their franchise in 1966 with the GMC, but still be a usable vehicle and enjoy it and have all the modern creature comforts. And that's kind of the angle that I took at with them is, is – do you want something that's got an old carburetor on it, the old original V305 V6 that leaks oil out of it everywhere, no matter what you do, pretty much? Has a carburetor, you still got to choke. You can't run down the highway because of the rear end gears. It wanders all over the road. Or do you want something that looks like that, but that you can drive anywhere in the country? You can take it to Arizona, you can take it to Utah, you can take it, load the family up, you can do whatever you want to it. And so this this truck has all the modern creature comforts um, and all the style, and you can get in it and drive it anywhere. Isn't it funny how you know you and I had talked uh, you know well over a year ago, and this was probably you know was thought to be a 2017 build. It ends up being a 2018 build, and uh, it's kind of the year of the suburban. That's that hashtag has even been kind of going around at least in in the small sect that i'm involved with and the interviews that i've been doing i mean there's a lot of suburbans out there right now there is a lot it was we pushed it trying to do it last year and we ran into some hiccups as happens with these builds all the time with uh just different aspects of everything so we ended up pulling the plug towards the end and pushed it back and decided and we made a bunch of changes in the last year to it um to take it down there that we just wanted to make some changes in general that things that they didn't look the way we wanted them to look so we decided to change it and probably in the last two months i've noticed uh popping up all over instagram on social media that it this really does seem to be the year of the suburbans everything from the first series all the way up into the uh I think I've even seen one or two square body suburbans that I think are coming to SEMA. I wouldn't doubt it. And if they're not this year, they probably will. And like you said, it's like the more, you know, it's kind of um, welcoming, you know, it's like, well, it's something different. It's something then uh, that we haven't seen that much of. And uh, all the way from Brad doing his first series, Stoner's got a sick patina one. Stoner's got a tri five one. Then you get into uh, both you Travis from Pro Performance, you've got the 60 to 66, so the first series C10s. Uh, then you got Brian Vowell, Trey 5 doing the second gen. Um, if there's a third gen, you know, even even better. I mean, it's it's pretty cool to see that we're going to see one, two, three, four, four minimum, if not five generations of Suburbans. I know there was uh, one, I think it's Tin Works, and he's not going to make it, but he had kind of that uh, square dually uh, that he was working on to, to get that to SEMA, and that's not going to happen. But uh, that would be crazy to see, you know, five generations of Suburbans all there and again uh, Blake Stoner from Stoner Speed he's bringing two different eras uh, alone you know so like you uh, with one seam it builds good then two's just absolute batshit crazy is kind of the way I look at it it's either that or we both need to be checked into the loony farm oh I, that's what I'm saying you do that's exactly what I'm saying I mean <laughs> But at least with this one, you you had time. You know, you had a lot more time and uh, were able to kind of do the slow approach versus some of these guys like Brad, you know, uh, that poor guy, he's up there by you. 
uh, he's he's under the gun. I mean, we got a week left, and you know Brad's doing what Brad does, and he uh, he did that with his Blazer, and we got a lot of SUVs coming to uh, SEMA 2018, the year of the Burb, and uh, that's cool. I think I think um, it's cool because it's not necessarily on its own island, but you get a look at a lot of them. You get a look at uh, and compare and say, oh, look at what they did here. Oh, I see what they did here. Oh, this is a little different. And, and they're all different eras, so it's not like it's all the exact same. So it's it's going to be a, it's going to be fun. Now, where is the bourbon at going to be at this year? Uh, the bourbon is going to be uh, a feature vehicle with Covercraft. Okay. So it'll be it'll be floating around. Um, I agree with the Suburbans that I think it's actually going to be a better year for us bringing it down just because there's going to be more there that I think the more the merrier. Um, it's, uh, I think that the way the C10 community is, that it's everybody enjoys everybody else's builds instead of it being like a competition and everybody out to get everybody. That In the C10 community, it seems to be the more the merrier. And everybody's happy for everybody. I mean, speaking of Brad, I saw his Instagram post last night, yesterday, or I was sweating for him. I thought I was sweating for us. I stopped sweating for me and started sweating for him a little bit. <laughs> I think we all I know are. how it is being in the <laughs> it's, uh, But it's, when you love what you do and there's a will, there's a way. And, I mean, we've we've been under the gun before where I didn't even know how we got it in the trailer. I mean, it's our painter last year with the BC 30, our painter delivered the bed to us the day it was going in the trailer. And he had just finished all the artwork on the tailgate of the thing the night before. Um, And it, it just comes down to under the gun. And in, when it comes to the crunch like this, it sure seems like the good people come out of the woodwork. We've had it happen anyways. Yeah, you uh, when your back's up against the wall, you know it's no different than uh, you know like leadership and wartime, and you know when it's like, hey, this is what we have to do and we have to make happen. So who's going to step up and who's going to who's going to lead? And and the builders out there, we're lucky that there's so many killer builders. And you know, I mean, maybe it's not the best reference, but again, I I mean, I'm a huge fan of Chip Foose, and you look at like. What, what Chip's been able to do over the years. Obviously, Aaron Coppin, we've been able to see that on Gas Monkey and now his new show, Shifting Gears. So you look at these builders that we're exposed to, and I know for every one guy like that that we're exposed to, there's you know, 20, 30 more, if not 500 more, that are out there doing it day in and day out. But you look at some of those very successful guys like that, and like yourself, uh, your clientele wouldn't continue to come back and or Covercraft and, you know, Eddie Motorsports wouldn't want you guys coming back if you weren't good at what you were doing. Um, Unfortunately for some guys, they just run out of time and uh, they get under the gun because of circumstances Whether, like you said, sometimes you're waiting on parts, sometimes parts you expect them, they're going to come in, you know, at one point and then they come in and they're damaged and you're like, well, now what do we have to do? And sometimes you just have to do it on the fly. You know, again, Brad, literally three years ago, Brad built his truck, assembled his truck on the way down from, you know, vancouver from bc he assembled it in route to vegas i mean that shit's crazy (laughs) nobody has ever said that we're sane i hear you man i hear you uh i was talking to joe yezzy and he's like don't ever build a sema truck it'll take part of your life and i was laughing because i remember after uh uh, sso1 he told me the same thing he's like i'm never doing this again and i think um I think one thing that makes humans uh, just special and, and amazing is we forget the bad. You know, uh, I built a house, I generaled the house, and my wife and I are like, we're never doing this again. And that was 0304. Well, and uh, we find ourselves in, you know, 2018, 2019, doing a full remodel on a house that not only are we remodeling it, but we're living in it at the same time. And I'll tell you, a, a full from scratch general build was easier than a remodel. And then on top of that, we're living in it with our three kids. So I think we just forget about the misery, and that's what allows us to kind of continue to to thrive and, and march on. And uh, that's a good thing, and you guys are doing that. It It is. And it's 
after last year and doing the project giving back for uh, our SEMA builds for three years in a row, my wife said after SEMA last year, she goes, we're taking a year off. That's it. We are taking a year off. Our daughter got married this year. Our middle child, our older son, he graduated from college. She goes, we're just, we need to take a year off. We're just going to go and we're going to enjoy it. We'll take the uh, Suburban, but we're going to give Project Giving back a year off. Well, apparently she folded and decided that she wanted to get back on board when uh, her sanity went astray about three months after SEMA, and she said, okay, I guess we'll do it again. Because she forgot. Oh. Oh, that's what I mean. It's so funny. I mean, it is. It, it, it's funny how she's the one you know, instigating it now once she was the one saying it then, and uh, you're like, whatever, babe, I'm in. Just let me know. Yep. Two weeks ago when she said she was stressed out, I said, but you you said let's do it. And <laughs> that does bless her heart, but that doesn't go over very well when I say that. Oh, I'm sure you had a shit-eating grin on your face, too, and that's the irony of it all. And she's like, don't remind me. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. All right, so what time can we see this thing? Because I want to be there to capture not only that, but uh, obviously uh, Alipai's reaction in the face, uh, you know, of the family. Uh, what time uh, are we going to see this thing? Uh, we're thinking early Tuesday morning, maybe about 9.30, 10 o'clock, somewhere in there. Okay, let's shoot for a 9.30 because I'm telling you right now, uh, old Square Body Syndicate, is they're unveiling theirs at 10.00. 10 at royal purples booth which is 23061 so that'll be uh, that'll be the 10 o'clocker and uh i need to be there so uh, hopefully we can do the uh project uh given back uh reveal a little earlier and that'll be at the eddie motorsports booth do you know the number for that one uh it's actually going to be a feature spot with eddie motorsports oh okay so you'll find out probably sunday saturday or sunday where you're going to be at Yep, okay. and then we'll go ahead and blast that out there. Yeah, and let me know because you know I'll put it out too, and uh, we'll be standing by. Hopefully, if it's before ten, because I know I'll have to get over to uh, uh, Royal Purple for that. Because not only will I be doing my interview series with Royal Purple, uh, but I'll obviously you know be there uh, for Square Body Syndicate and Joe as well. So um, that's what I think is going to start happening on Tuesday. There's so many things going on. Just so you know, I know at ten there's the Square Body Syndicate at I think. Might be eleven thirty. Ring Brothers is unveiling their Blazer, so they've got a K five Blazer, which we didn't even get into Blazers. There's a handful of Blazers too on top of the Suburbans this year. So definitely the SUV series, the family carrying series uh, of uh, C tens, if you will, uh, being released. And I think uh, River City's doing their B one hundred, which is kind of a version of a Suburban of all things, a Ford version, which. They, you know, you can barely ever even find those. So the B100 is going to be there. I think they're doing like an 11 o'clock. So after like 10, it gets crazy. Uh, so I'm going to highly encourage you to do it during do an early one. But keep me in the loop, Lion. I, I always like catching up with you, um, seeing, you know, your family. And uh, we look forward to that this, this year as well. If there's anything we can help you do, obviously to promote it, both the Suburban and the uh, 78 Square GMC, uh, please, uh, please let us know. We will. We'll just uh, we'll just make it an iron deal at nine thirty Tuesday morning. We'll pull the cover on it. Okay, let's do it, and I'll uh, I'll let the world know. We'll have it here on the recording, and then I'll get the uh, let's get together in the next. Uh, we got a little. Well, I guess tomorrow's Tuesday, so we got a week after tomorrow to uh, to get that word out and uh, continue project giving back, and and uh, that'll be uh, that'll be fun. So uh, we'll we'll do that. We'll uh, help you however we can, and. Uh, Tell your wife I said hi, have a great night, and uh, get out there and wrap these things up. Awesome. Sounds good. Thank you again.